Hey, what's up guys? My name is Acherno. Welcome back to my OpenGL series. So today we're going to be talking about uniforms in shaders and specifically I wanted to talk about how we can cache uniforms and in general just how we can deal with uniforms in a bit of a smarter way because we all know how to kind of set uniforms. I've got a video on uniforms in OpenGL and shaders and all that stuff. Check that out if you haven't already. But Specifically, instead of just retrieving uniforms from OpenGL, from our GPU, every single time we need to set a uniform, there are many different things that we can actually do to kind of retain that location um, and take advantage of the fact that once uniforms have kind of been retrieved, you know, once we've compiled our shader, we've got that actual kind of shader object on our GPU. And of course, the shader in the GPU is aware of all of, all of the uniforms that are kind of contained within it, all of the valid uniforms. Once we've kind of got all that data, there's no reason for us to continually query the GPU being like, hey, please tell me what, like where my uniform is because we should already know that stuff. And as you know, as, as you should know, pretty much any OpenGL call that you actually run is gonna be slower than a lot of the C++ style stuff that you can actually do because a lot of it actually hits the GPU and thus kind of requires a little bit more processing power and takes more time than if we did something a lot more simple. So today specifically, we're gonna talk about caching that uniform um, so that we can just kind of retrieve the location at any time we want, basically building a little system, a very, very simple system that just holds on to a uniform location for a given name that we have inside our kind of C++ side shader object. Um, but in general, I may talk about this a little bit more in the future, because what typically happens is once you actually compile your shader, pretty much every kind of game engine or every kind of rendering engine is actually going to physically read that shader source code and then determine what to kind of do with that, right? So in other words, if we just kind of load a shader and we compile it and we use OpenGL to do all that stuff, Another very useful thing for us to do is actually kind of read this, the shader source code inside C++ and then extract data from it. So from that, you can actually find out all of the attributes, all of the uniforms, all of the functions, everything that is in the shader. We can write a program essentially that just kind of reads that text, that shader source code. And then from there, it can intelligently almost convert it into actual data that we can leverage and use at runtime. And so in a, in a setup like that, where you've got a proper system and a proper engine like that, you would typically just read your shader source code and then find all of the uniforms in the actual shader text and then retrieve all the locations or validate all of the, all of the uniforms basically when you're compiling your shader. So in that case, anytime you get, you know, when, when your renderer is actually setting uniforms in your shader, all of that stuff has already been done. You already have all, all the locations. You can easily check to see if a uniform even exists or not without touching OpenGL. Why? Because you've read the shader source code. So that is something that would happen in a more complete system. What I'm showing you guys today is a quick and dirty little kind of hack, if you will, just to speed up your program a little bit. If you're just building something quick in OpenGL, you don't want to have this massive like rendering engine or anything like that set up. And you just want to kind of speed up your code quickly um, without much effort really by just kind of you know, it's almost like one simple trick to faster uniform setting. That's kind of what this is, right? In fact, if I name the video that, I'll probably just get in trouble with all of you guys. So I might not name it one simple trick to speed up your uniform. Maybe I will. We'll see. But the point is, it's super simple and it's a way that we can just easily uh, speed up our uniform setting by just not retrieving the location every time from OpenGL, but by caching it. Let's take a look. So I have this very, very simple shader class that we have here, kind of left over from the OpenGL series. and. Uh, what it has really is, and what it represents is just basically a shader which contains, you know, a rendering ID. So it's like a kind of like a compiled shader object. This is like the CPU representation of an actual compiled and created shader object on our GPU. Uh, a bunch of functions for like binding and unbinding it and also setting all of these uniforms. So this is kind of the meat of everything. And if we take a look at what that code actually does, it's really, really simple. All it really does is for every uniform that we set here, such as let's just say a three component vector here, a vec3, it gets the location from the from OpenGL, right? Using our render ID and the name of the uniform. And then it sets that uniform, right? And I mean, we've got this GL call macro, by the way, which is quite old and not something you would typically use nowadays. 
Um, but the, and, and, you know, you can see that this location stuff isn't wrapped in that macro, but that's besides the point. Um, if we were to just make this even more readable, um, is kind of my point of that, uh, then this is kind of like what we end up with. Really, really simple, right? We basically retrieve the location if we want to set the uniform. We get the location here, which is going to be an integer, and then we use that here. And you could even use some kind of validation to make sure that that actually exists, because we know that if it um, is negative one, right, then it's invalid. So what we might do is something like this. This is a very very, very uh, common code that you see in OpenGL quite often, right? Where someone basically retrieves the location, checks to see if the location is like negative one or not, um, and then sets the uniform and that's it, that's done. That's gonna work beautifully. But the problem is it's a little bit inefficient because again, as I mentioned, this is gonna be a piece of hot code that if you hit it often, um, you're gonna run into problems. And we could even ch like test that out by just using the profiler here. I think if we go like, you know, debug profiler, performance explorer, you know, we show that we, we kind of show that and start like a new performance session um, and take a look if we had a program that was, you know, setting uniforms every frame, you'd see that this would come up as kind of a hot piece of code, right? Because this is something that's going to get hit um, often every time, right? And uh, since it is a GL call, it takes a bit of time to do. So what we can do instead is grab this location, as you can see we're doing, right? And then store it in just a hash map. So if we hop over to our header file, what we can do is just include an unordered map. And then over here, we'll just type in std unordered map. Now the key here is going to be our actual name. So a string which represents the name of our uniform that we want to kind of retrieve. And then GL int is gonna be the value, right? Because that's actually the open GL identifier that we use for that particular uniform location. We can call this our uniform location cache, right? And then what this is gonna uh, essentially do and where we're actually gonna use this is every time that we want to retrieve a location, we'll check to see if it exists in the map. And if it does, then no need for us to actually retrieve it from OpenGL. To do that, we're gonna make a little convenience function for ourselves called uh, GL int, and I'll kind of put this at the bottom here. GL int get uniform location. This is again going to take in a const uh, string reference, which is going to be our actual name, and is going to return a GL int, right? But what this function is going to do, that's gonna be a little bit different than um, what we currently have, if I just kind of uh, create it here, what it's going to do is only get the location again if it's already checked the cache. So the first step is to check the cache and see if we've actually got that value in there. So if this if this uniform location cache actually contains, so if we use find here with the name as the key, um, if this actually already exists, if the cache contains a uniform with this name, um, so basically we can do that by just saying if it doesn't equal uh, uniform location cache and then we just return that, simple as that. So we'll just do uniform location cache name like this, okay? What this does is just returns the cached value that already exists inside our data structure, and that means that work, our work is done. Now, if it's not in the cache, then what we need to do is retrieve it just by using this code here, right? Then store it in the cache, which we can do by just uh, typing in uniform location cache name equals location, right? So we're now storing it in the cache. And then obviously we still need to return it because this function retrieves the uniform location. All right, simple as that. One other thing I would do potentially is mark this this function as const. The reason being that, you know, this is just kind of, it's what it is, is it's supposed to be something that just retrieves a uniform location. It's not really modifying our shader or doing anything at all of that nature. Now, since like, if we do mark it as const, you'll notice we will actually get an error. And the reason we'll get an error is because we're actually modifying uniform location cache. We're setting it right over here. And as you can see, that results in an error. Um, and this error right here, by the way, is totally, it just hasn't compiled it. Um, so that's totally fine. But this is actually a real error. If I hit control F7, you'll see that that's not gonna work. So what we need to do is basically mark our uniform location cache as a mutable variable. What that means is that it can be modified by a const function. Now this might be a little bit counterintuitive. Why are you creating a mutable variable? Like why mark this function as const? But again, I'm explaining that the reason this function is marked as const is because the actual operation is just reading the location of our uniform, right? The underlying implementation caches the value, but that's not important to the caller, basically. It's it's not really modifying 
it's not really modifying our shader at all. What it is doing is just keeping information inside a cache, which is totally fine. Okay, so now that we've got this, instead of doing all of this stuff every time and getting our location manually, what we can just do now is call this get uniform location with the name and that's it. That is what our location becomes. So now what happens, and we'll demonstrate this in a minute, if I just quickly replace all of these. Now what happens if I put a breakpoint here and run this program? Okay, so now that I'm running my program, you can see that we're trying to set this model view projection matrix uniform to a certain value. What happens is it's going to, of course, run this get uniform location function, which the first time this runs, the cache is, of course, uh, somewhat empty. I mean, in this case, it's actually got you color and you texture already in there, but it doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't have the MVP location stored at all. So obviously it's not gonna find it. And then it's going to actually retrieve the, that location from OpenGL, store it inside the cache, and then return that location. And then if I hit F5 and we come back to the next time we ask for this MVP matrix location, right? The uniform location cache obviously contains it, which means that now it just simply returns this uniform location, as you can see. And that is a lot faster than actually querying OpenGL and being like, hey, what's this uniform location? Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. If this helped you out, drop a like below. Another thing you could do is test this out, of course, in your code base, see how much faster it is. Just run a quick, like write a quick timer that compares the performance before and after, and then you can share your results in the comment section below. I will see you next time. Goodbye.